Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. It's gonna be a cheese compilation for August 2020. Hmm, these two players just played each other, so I think uh, they're gonna be pretty familiar with each other's strategies. Bottom right hand corner is Corollis. It is the Protoss player. He's red. Top left, it is the Blue Zerg player, Pill. This is the cheese compilation. If you want me to cast your cheesy game, send it to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of cheese and good things will happen. I will send it to my screeners. Thank you very much to Stefan, Jim, Scott, and Ryan who came through today and over the last couple days in screening this cheese for me. It saves me a ton of time. The best ones are chosen and the best ones are here. If you don't get cast this month, don't despair. Try again. Try again next month. Interesting cheese gets through. In particular, one thing I do tell my screeners is, if it's a worker rush, let's not include it unless we've never seen a weird twist on like it before. I don't even have a forge yet, says Krullis. Uh, in addition, the higher level you are, the more likely it is for them to choose your cheese. So, I mean, if you're a master's level grandmaster player, send me your cheese. I'll enjoy it. Ah, Kroll is going for the forward pylon. But yeah, send him to falconpaladin at gmail.com. Another bit of housekeeping. I reached a goal on patreon.com slash falconpaladin that I reached, or that I set, two years ago. We made it. We made it recently. I'm very happy. Thanks to everyone who has helped me reach that goal on patreon.com slash falconpaladin. As a result, I will be casting and hosting a $200 Falcon Paladin Starcraft 2 Open as the Overlord finds this. There's a link in the description. If you'd like to join, please do. It's on Challenge, pretty easy. You can log in with Twitter and Facebook and set up your own account, whatever you want to do, no problems. But come join. $200 prize pool is going to be broadcast on twitch.tv slash Falcon Paladin. It is coming up in about two weeks, about 10 days from now, okay? If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to respond to them. <laughs> now I have a forge, says Krullis. True facts. I don't know what this is. It's like the weirdest cannon rush of all time. And he's not expanding. He's getting a robotics facility instead. Is it like Immortals or something? I'm so confused about this game right now. Pill's like, yeah, me too. This is the like, furthest out cannon rush I've ever seen. Overlord says, aha, uh -huh. I see you're getting a robotics facility. You've got two cannons at your front and you don't have an expansion yet. This is good information to get. This is why these Overlord perching spots exist. On the other end, what's Pill doing? Pill's just like, I guess I'll just drone up. He has no Zerglings, by the way. He ha exactly has 26 drones and no Zerglings. He's making a Roach Warren. As there's a gateway coming up at his front here, too, for Krullis. What is happening? There's a Zealot out to help finish that wall, because this is a little bit of a wider opening to your natural than is average on other maps. And it's, gonna, it's gotta be, oh, it's an observer. A really fast observer. And another gateway back home. This is the weirdest thing Krolis is doing right now. I like it. This is why I like the cheese compilation. You get stuff that you don't expect, yo. Who expects the Spanish Inquisition? That's what the cheese compilation is. It's effectively the Spanish Inquisition. Dude, what if like four zealots showed up right now? You just have such a hard time defending this. Pale is just not concerned at all. Feels like, we're good. Don't worry about it. An immortal on the way from Krullis to try to handle the roaches that are in production now. And I mean, Pill doesn't need to expand. Krullis here is not expanded, so he should feel no pressure to himself. But, uh, ah, the Observer spots and kills the Overlord. Well, helps the Stalker kill the Overlord. Good teamwork there. And he knows it's a robo opening, so I'm not sure. Like, really, at this point, just like a billion speedlings would be kind of awesome against this. There's one Stalker, one Zealot, and one Immortal wandering their way out across the map. Pill needs more than this. His army supply is not great. He's got three Roaches and a bunch of Queens, which are okay. They're decent DPS. They're okay against the ground. Not the greatest. Ah, oh, gonna try to supply block the Zerg player. Not gonna be able to. And here's the fast warping because this pylon's touching that warp gate. All right, man. It's a very, very, very strange three gate robo opening. It's almost like it's a PvP build we're seeing right now off of one base. And I think Pill just needs stuff. Why is he leaving? He knows there's stuff down here. 
Phil, decision making bad. Also, pill floating 700 minerals and 200 gas. More roaches, man. Just like a hundred roaches. All the roaches you can get off of two bases. Go. You're getting plus one attack, which is nice. We're just getting adepts. We just want one of everything here from Krullis. And I think that's it. I don't... There's not enough army here. It's 42 to 27 army supply in favor of Pill. Yet, the queens count as army supply and they're just not... Not all oh, that... Okay. Well, two immortals can kill a large number of roaches. Okay, that is just... Blech. Phil, my friend. My one and only friend. I just, he didn't prepare for this well at all. Like, these roaches and ravagers might be able to do some stuff, but look at these immortals. Six kills, four kills. The roaches are all gone. The ravagers are a bit of a problem. Lings, again. A whole bunch of lings would have been really nice here, but Phil's still floating cash. These immortals are immortal. That is a 10 kill. Immortal. And that is your GG. There's just, you're not coming back from this, man. I like how it serves the army supplies even, but it's really not, actually. All right, they're going to kill this one immortal. 13 killed. Oh, hang on. Oh, they got him. All right, so that immortal's dead. This one has 18 kills. Is continuing the play here. Do these stalkers need to stop killing overlords and start help killing these zerglings? Oh, three shotting roaches. Ugh. Two, three. Okay, these stalkers have finally joined the fight, and now what the? Heck? Yeah, man. Three roaches and a queen. No, I hate that forge. <laughs> Good game. And a bit of a wonky game number one there, but. At the end of the day, I think Pill, he had a ton of resources. He just didn't quite spend it well enough. And also, he moved out. Like, I don't know what he was trying to do. He knew there was a stalker down here killing stuff. He knew there was a base down here, probably used for warping in things. And he just sent his roaches across the map anyway. And then his army wasn't together. Not that it would have mattered, I don't think, in the long run. Anyway, that's game one. Let's keep this thing moving. Moving, moving. We'll be back just right now. Game two's here on Golden Wall, a good map for cheesy games. Bottom right, it is Mad Scientist, and in the bottom left, it is the Blue Terran player, Brick Frog. It's kind of a fun name, Brick Frog. Fun to say, interesting to think about. Is it a brick made out of a frog or a frog that is a brick? Uh, hang on a second. Brick made out of a frog or a frog made out of brick? What do you think? I don't frankly know. Check out the Falcon Paladin in an hour. It's a weekly podcast with myself and Somicron. We talk about nerdy things, anime, StarCraft 2, professional tournaments like GSL. We make bets on such things as well. We've got a sports ball minute at the end if you're into sports ball. We do all sorts of great stuff. Talk about TV shows and movies and books and magazines and video games. And that's where we are. Now, this is Cannon Rushing from Mad Scientist here. He's got a cheese tag, which indicates a few things. And here we go. Let it begin. Probe hiding, just in case something comes out here and tries to murder stuff. He's hide he's hidden away. Two probes here because a smart cannon rusher recognizes that sometimes your first probe dies and having a backup probe is really useful. So, all right. Just right here, man. Bam. It's a good place. SCVs can't surround it to kill it. I mean, if they recognize what's happening, they can take these down. SCVs are good fighters, but it looks like Brick Frog is not interested in doing any of that. He needs to... Okay, so Supply Depot, look at him. He's just like... Doo, 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 doo. I'm not building anything. No Marines. No nothing. What is the reaction to this? Two Supply Depots. He's got double gas rolling. He's making a Marine now, but that's it. I think we're toast. This cannon rush is a success. I don't know really what Brick Frog can do here other than have a factory started already, which he doesn't. The Marine's going to pop out of this barracks and die. Oh, no, no, no. Wait. Oh, okay. He really wanted... He wants to. Bad. There we go. There it is, lads. I love this angle where the like the cannon plasma discharges are going up. Up and kind of around. So he saves his barracks, which is great. He doesn't have... Because he took so much gas. He's got an engineering bay. Is he going to upgrade this to a planetary? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That would be... Hilarious. Dude, he just... He, okay, well... 
is just throwing up pylons and potential cannon placements everywhere. This planetary fortress upgrade is interesting. I don't, I mean, keep him alive, I guess. He's also going for high sec auto. Uh, maybe he is. He's got a lot of gas, remember. Is that cannon in a range of the planetary? Alright, so that cannon is just too much. We're gonna kill that one. I think we're gonna kill these two. Planetary fighting. Oh yeah, it's in range of the cannon, but the cannon wasn't fighting him at first. Dude, kill it. Why are you... They're really trying to kill this probe. Which seems like a poor idea. Alright, so the probe is dead. But maybe repair the planetary at this point? I don't... This is, uh... This is crazy right now. It's not often you see a planetary fortress fighting a cannon. That one's taking extra hits early. It's gonna get something done here. But look at the second. Remember the second guy I was telling you about? Whoa! Big. That was a huge explosion. Mass cancel. Look at the debris from canceling those. Pi Whoa! Canceling pylons leaves like craters in the ground. Trying to trying to get tanks out, but he's in range of a cannon again. Oh, come on, man! You can. Oh, is that a reactor? This is the most aggressive cannon rush I've seen in some time. Look at that poor, partially constructed refinery. It will never be. That cannon's in range. He's trying to get that add-on happening, but now his SCVs are getting hit by cannons on the back. The barracks is dead. I mean, that's it. That is just a shellacking marine down. SCV is down by the dozen right now. Uh, it's all about reaction time with cannon rushes. If those first two cannons get up, suddenly you're in a lot of trouble. Every time. Happened to me more often than I want to admit. Hey, that's not a tech lab. GG! And yes, indeed. You did not make a tech lab on your factory. It's a reactor for some reason. You made a tech lab over here. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever, it's good. All right. A super aggressive. Super aggressive cannon rush there for Mad Scientist. Gets the win. The planetary is an interesting choice, but... Getting a tank out. Just one tank out, man. Would have been enough to shut this thing down. I don't know if he would have won in the long run, but it would have shut down the cannon rush. So, lessons learned. We live. We learn. Maybe he'll do better next time. All right. Guess what? We have more cheese. Shroot Farms and Alchemy on Pillars of Gold. The top right, Shroot Farms. Dwight's around here somewhere. And in the bottom left, it is Alchemy. He is blue. And he is Protoss. And this is PvP shenanigans for the cheese compilation. Protoss is usually well represented here because of cannon rushes and because of all the different kinds of cheese you can do. Proxy Oracles. You can rush Battle Cruisers. You can rush Mothership. You can proxy gateways and robotics facilities. Ah, it is endless. It feels truly endless. I played against a Protoss player today. I did not scout my natural very well. And by the time that I did, there was, let's see, a cannon in the corner, a pylon, and a gateway protecting the cannon. And the cannon was just in range of my hatchery. Needless to say, I lost that game. And I will do better scouting my natural from now on. I need to learn that lesson a lot. Anyway, so it's going to be a cannon rush here from Shroot Farms. Forge first, scouted by Alchemy. Gateway first here from Alchemy. Oh boy, here we go. He's pulling the probes. Very, very smart. All right, so here we go. Uh, yes, if you get it early enough, you can kill a cannon with just three probes. There we go. So canceling it. Excellent, excellent job. Killing this probe is... Whoa, okay, maybe not like all... Oh, this is actually working out pretty well. Got some good hits out there, so this one's dead. Pylon. I don't think you need to kill the pylon. Just get the zealot out. There we go. Make sure this doesn't happen. Ah! No! Alchemy doesn't know this is... Alchemy, no. Don't assume. Don't assume there's nothing happening there. All right. 
Zealot needs to come now. And Zealot has arrived. Hath arrived. So killing this pylon, massive. Because that means these cannons are never going to be powered. And he knows about... Oh, okay. That... Recognize! You have to recognize that's a pylon coming up. That means there's another pylon... Or a cannon coming up. That means there's another pylon somewhere. Oh, this is rough. This is rough to see. Okay, that's great. Okay, oh, that was actually a pylon. Fair enough. Killing that pylon was a big deal. And now, uh, once that one's down, go get this cannon. Go get the cannon. Go get... Ah, oh, he knows. You see it's there? Okay. Look, man. Defending cannon rushes is extremely stressful. I get that. Maybe a stalker would be good. High ground it. Hey, look. Backup probes here. What did I say about cannon rushing? Oh, that free zealot. Free zealot. Free zealot alert. That cybernetics core is in trouble. Although, oh, that shield battery. Look at that shield battery keeping the zealot alive over here. Incredibly, forever and ever keeping him alive while he kills this pylon. Okay, not forever and ever, but still. All right, Stalker, kill the pylon. Kill this, all right, trying to kill the pylon. Shield battery gonna die. Probe up here is providing the vision necessary though. And look at Alchemy. Ah, he's got his own little shenanigans happening over here. All right, I support it. That pylon looks like it's a weird angle to you. Looks like it's a weird angle to me. Here we go. Now, now this is when you get in trouble. When there's an immortal out. That's when it gets dangerous for the cannon rusher. Cybercore goes down. No more stalkers, but the immortal on the high ground doing some work here. Yeah, trying to keep that probe away while just wrecking cannons. Oh, probe gets sniped, and now you can sit up here. Oh, there's another probe. Never mind. This is some aggressive has-style stuff out of Shroot Farms, man. Get over there and start hammering away at these cannons. You've got to do it. Meanwhile, I don't know what's happening over this way. Maybe you warp in some zealots and, like, go for the win. There's nothing defending. There's so much invested into this side of the map. Alright, six kills. The cannon rush is pretty much over at this point. I really don't see this. Oh, shield battery. And two immortals, though. And a stalker. Alright, so now you're donating zealots. Oh, two immortals. Good game. Shroot Farms is out. He doesn't even wait for the counterattack to show up here. He recognizes he can't deal with immortals at all. He does not have the robo. He could have made one, though. I mean, it's not too bad. Make a robo, maybe make another gateway up here. He's spending his money really well, though. He's got 96 minerals, which means he can't really do that fast. Uh, Alchemy, not spending his money as well. He did lose his Robo, or rather, his Cyber Core, which he is replacing. Either way, I guess maybe the fallout from Fruit Farms was too much to expect, and he just tapped out. So good. Hey, guess what? More. We have more of this. It is delicious, and it is cheesy. It's Heed versus Krillis. We're back on Golden Wall. Bottom right, Krillis. Bottom left, it is Heed. Hmm, delicious. Delicious Heed. I don't know why that's delicious. Anyway, Golden Wall. Man, it is a good map. You know it's good because professionals do not veto it as often as you think it should be, right? Sometimes it's the last map in a best of seven. Sometimes it's the first map in a best of seven. All right, so what are we doing? Who's going to be the cheeser? Is it always the Protoss? Do we feel like it's always the Protoss? We feel like it's always the Protoss, don't we? Although that's a gateway. That is not, in fact, a forge whatsoever. Double, my goodness, really? Double gas Terran against the Protoss again. I mean, this isn't 
It's not a cannon rush, so the, this double gas isn't going to kill him too hard. But what are we doing, Terran players? Why are you going double gas early against Protoss? Are you going for, like, a battle cruiser rush? That's a terrible idea against Protoss. They have Stalkers that do bonus damage versus armored and shoot up. Like, Stalkers are the best early anti-battle cruiser thing in the game. That's tier 1.5, man. Anyway, let's see. We'll have to take a look. I mean, we are far from that. We need a factory, good. And then we need a starport, good. And then we need a fusion core. I mean, it's a long ways. It's a long ways down the road. But Krolis, on the other hand, has some proxy shenanigans in mind. Remember when I said proxies are a thing? No, wait. Okay, so we're going to go two gate, pylon here, wait for the cyber core, and then I don't know what. Stargate? Maybe we're going DTs? Maybe we need a Twilight Council first? What do you think? Maybe. Okay, when the Cyber Core is done, that's when it gets interesting for Protoss. And it is going to be a pro just a proxy gate. Alright, man. So I think we saw Krolis do this in an earlier game. Which, I don't know. Again, I feel like his opponent wasn't quite prepared for it. Oh, it's a proxy factory over here, though, from Heed. What is happening? Maybe Cyclones? Cyclones are kind of surprisingly good against Protoss. I love the double cheese, though. I love the double proxy over here with the Robo 2, and I love the fact that there's a factory on the other side of the map. This just brings out the cheesiness in everybody, you know? Really does. Pro can get in for a scout. There's a tiny bit of a window here. It's an armory. Ugh. Maybe he's going for Widow Mines? No, that's a tech lab, though. Ah, uh, I don't know. Because, like, this allows your Widow Mines to be permacloaked when they're burrowed, which is nice. It also allows your Hellbats, or Hellions to turn into Hellbats, which is nice. But neither of those things need a tech lab. This should be a reactor, if anything. I mean, it would be pretty sick just to, like, walk in Widow Mines in here and just win. Uh, because there is no detection from the Protoss. He's making an immortal. Look, there's Hellions over here. And it's a Thor. Okay! So we're just going Thor here. This is going to be interesting, at the very least. I will give you that. So the, I didn't even consider you need an armory for a Thor. It just... Like, Thor rush against Protoss doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Alright, Zealot's Immortals. Supply blocked, unfortunately. Getting supply blocked is, like, a number one cause of players losing matches on the ladder, I think. Hellions cruising on out. They're not going to see these guys as they're taking the northern route. And this is the southern route, for show. And the Thor's just going to wander in. Alright, so that probe is dead. Widow Mine on the ramp. Ooh, I do love that we are getting Widow Mines here. But the army's supply is getting a little bit scary. Alright, so just Hellbat Thor. We're just mecking it here against our Protoss player, Krullis, whose army's on the other side of the map, mind you. They're here. And we're base racing this thing. I feel like we're doing a bit of a base race based on the positioning of these armies. And they're not fast armies either. Man, if I were him, I would just burrow the Widow Mines. Ooh, friendly fire. In these mineral lines. Just go for it. Unnecessary burrow there, friend. There's nothing to stop you because the army's over here murdering your face. Yeah, I... There... I mean, no. This is not happening. All right, so we're base race mode, but unfortunately the Protoss has more stuff. He's uh, just going to wreck your factory. He's going to go... I mean... Oh, the Widow Mines, though. Ugh. Oh, gosh, that Widow Mine hit. None of the probes escape. That is an eight-kill Widow Mine right there, everybody, that you saw that huge, massive Widow Mine hit. Brutal. Just life-changingly gross. Uh, you guys need to help with the... There you go. You need to help with the base race. This is where you lift off your orbital and float it down here. Don't be too late. Come on. Don't be too late. Lift up some of... You can load some of the SCVs into the orbital. And th I guess you have mules to repair too if you want. Or it could just die. Dude, get down, land, call a mule. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, they got it. Oh, he should have used the SCVs to repair. That's huge. That's game losing right there. That is game losing. Losing that orbital means you're done, I think. 
I mean, he did accidentally scout the stuff, so that's cool. I don't. I mean, I guess he has 1,300 minerals. He can rebuild a command center somewhere. Uh, Corollas can actually build a nexus, too. So we're not, you know, we're not dead in the water yet, I guess. Ooh, he's trying to get his SCVs over here, but the stalkers recognize what's going on. Uh, he, whoa, where did his resources go? Didn't he have like 1,400? Oh, okay, he's building a supply depot. I thought he had like 1,400 minerals a second ago, and I guess then he made a command center. So, all right, fair enough. Fair enough. Dude, Krillis. Are, oh, does he did all his probes die? No, he's got a probe. He has a probe remaining. Where is it? Build a nexus somewhere, single probe. You can do it. Oh, he's in the Terran base. <laughs> oh, getting out's going to be impossible. There's a siege tank there. Oh, the Widow Man got some hits. The th pull back to the siege tank. Fight with the siege tank. The siege tank. Okay, all right. So the siege tank. Repair. Repair it. Ah, oh, the repair did not happen. Tank firing. Okay. All right. They don't like what they see with the tank. Krollis can't get out of here. The siege tank will obliterate it if it tries to leave. If he tries to build a pylon, it'll just be revealed. Problem is, there's this one siege tank here. And now that there's Observer, these two immortals are going to crush it. Are you ready? You ready for these immortals to crush this siege tank? I bet you are. Ready, set, dead. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Don't you love these games? Says he. Good game. Krolis is your winner in eight minutes. And there we go. Again, I'd like to keep the cheese to around seven minutes. If it's a little bit, it can be a little bit longer if it's interesting, which this one was. So eight minutes is totally fine. Good job, screeners. Good job, Krolis, sending it in. Let's keep going. 2v2 cheese here on Heavy Artillery. Team North, Captain America. It is the Red Protoss player, Mad Scientist. And down south-ish, his teammate, Bits Please. In the bottom side, Team Joker, we've got our purple Terran player, La Lagunazo. And then his teammate, it's a Teal Protoss, his name is Time. Three, two, one, says Mad Scientist. All right, so are we just, okay, I just we're proxy racks in here, everyone. In case you were curious, that's what's going on right now. On the other end, trying to kind of wall off here. It's nice and easy to wall off this ramp leading up into your main base. You have a little expansion too you can take and share. I have got some kind of fun games on this map now that I think about it. It's been a while though since I've really cast a game on heavy artillery. Very, very common though. Very common 2v2 map for sure. There's your forge. Okay, so we're going to cannon rush and proxy racks. You ready for this action? So the wall is real. Barracks coming up early here from Laganazo. There's a gateway coming in at the same time from time. And the proxy racks are up along this left side. And this is the heavy artillery they're talking about in this map. Look at that thing. I can probably shoot down like a spaceship, man. Incredible. And once again, just an aggressive cannon rush here from Mad Scientist. Low ground in it. And here come the SCVs. The response is better this time from Team Terran. Can you get on the other side and kill the other one? No, 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 at least kill one. Why would you? Okay. He's just abandoning base and to lift the. You let him in. You let him in the house because you didn't lift your supply depot. Okay, so we're going to leave. You left the thing down, says Med Scientist. It's true. But I don't think it would really matter just because, like, look. <laughs> Lagan also is mad. You bring the probe up here, and then the cannons can hit the thing anyway. So it doesn't matter all that much. The zealots are doing some work right now. The barracks just needs to land like here, dude. Alright, so that cannon's toast. This cannon probably toast as well. That is the dumbest place for a bunker. Why? 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 Oh, it's the other team. Never mind, we're good. Bits Please is doing it. I apologize. <laughs> so that's toast. I bet you can kill that SCV. You want to kill that SCV? Uh, does not want to kill the SCV. It wants to kill these pylons instead. Marine, help kill stuff, man. Oh, there's two Marines here from Bits Please, though. But guess what? Stalker Zealot, pretty scary, yo. Zealot, okay, help it. Dang, the explosions? 
are intense. Look at this. Look at how intense these explosions are. Okay, that one didn't leave a massive crater. I think it's just, is it just the cannons that leave huge explosions? Dude, you can't let these finish. Where'd that zealot go? Is he here? Like, the cannon rush is the bigger concern, y'all. All right, here we go. Ow, bails. Bails on it. Marine SCV shutting this stuff down quite nicely. There's a cannon coming up there, though, which is going to be a problem. And I'm not sure it's in range necessarily, but look at the Marines. They're pumping across the map right now. Bunker doing some serious work. Ooh, that probe almost died. That is almost dead probe. That would have been humongous. Careful, 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 careful. Okay, got him. Got the probe, but dies to cannons almost. Almost. Guess who's here? Big Marine Ball from Bits, please. He's ready to rock. He's got a huge number of Marines for this stage of the game. And that's it. Lagunazo is out. An Oracle is here from time, though. Okay. But if you have enough Marines, guess what? It doesn't matter. Done. Mad Scientist Bits, please are your winners in four minutes and four seconds. That is some efficient, highly, highly efficient cheese. Are we, are we still here, though? Okay, I keep waiting for them to leave, but nope. Now they did. All right, excellent. Yeah, just, I mean, you get a teammate who likes cheesing and join the 2v2, and you guys can win a bunch of games doing this stuff. Yeah, I don't think it mattered that the Supply Depot was down, because, again, the probe comes up here, the cannons have vision on the Supply Depot, and it dies anyway. What it came down to was you needed a bunker fast. Marine production needed to happen. And I guess maybe Stargate wasn't really the answer here. Hard to say. All right. More cheese. We're not done yet. Let's stick with it. We'll be right back. Dude, Krullis, you got into this three times this month. Good job. Bottom right. Juanito, top left. It is Krullis. ZVP action here. He's got the Brood War skin. This is a War Chest skin that you can earn. Wait, maybe give them to him free? Anyway, no fun, says Krolis. Why'd you just say GL? Why did you not say GLHF? I, I mean, maybe some people don't want to give their opponent fun. Starcraft, though. We're on Deathora, anyway. Or Deathara, or I don't know. Testosis calls it Deathora, but I don't know. All right, then, little one. Juanito, which is what that is. Little one in Spanish. We're going to gateway here. And again, I think Krolis, he just has this strategy. He uses it his level of the ladder where he just proxies a star or a pylon and a gateway and then maybe a robo and then just shows up with like whatever. Whatever happens to be in the grab bag today and then wins. One base attacks, man. Nobody expects them. Everybody likes going for the one gate expand. Everybody likes going for the hat first play. Oh, this can't. Is this gonna work? Dude, that forge is finishing. And the Overlord sees this. Because the Overlord's in position to see this. There's zero reaction. Like, Juanito's like, you know what? Sure. Make a pylon down there. My pool's nowhere near complete. I won't be able to defend anything if the cannon comes up. And again, response time from Juanito. My goodness, this has been just an education on how not to handle. Being cannon rushed, or how to handle being proxied today. Look at the overlords like, well, I'm out of here. I'm not interested in getting shot in the face, but this hat sure can die. Alright, so the hatch gets cancelled, and there's just... Is there an effort to replant it? He's got a drone running for its life. In random spots. Krolis is like, well, okay. I guess, fine, I guess if you're not going to take a traditional location, that's cool. Look at him take the Rich Vespine Geyser base, though. That's so hot. Nice, Juanito. I like that idea very much. This is not a wall, either. Ugh. Zerglings. Make Zerglings get speed. Maybe spend some of this 250 gas you're sitting on. And there you go. When in doubt, Zerg players go Roach. So, like, if you're Protoss and you like going for early aggressive builds like this with cannon rushes, follow up with Immortals. 
Zerg players are going to make roaches in situations where they feel threatened. And then your immortals can crush them, I suppose, is how this works. <sighs> All right, at least the Overlord scouts what's happening here. It's like, mm -hmm, yes, work gate. Mm -hmm, yes, a gateway at home. Wonderful news. Very good news. Guess what's over here? Hey, it's a robo and a cannon. Frolis, man, he's got his he's got his style. Ah, uh, he got spotted. He got spotted, and yes, Juanito has to get out. Frolis's map awareness today has just been good. Just not allowing Juanito to get away with anything. Poor little Juanito. Where's the probe? I thought you were following. Little Juanito is extremely redundant, isn't it? I apologize. Hmm. I don't really speak Spanish. Alright, uh... Let's... Mortal? Great. Oh, it's got some Ravagers! Look at him getting Ravagers! Okay. I support this from Juanito. The problem is he's one base versus a one basing Protoss, and that's pretty much death every time. Like, fine. I'll take my natural base at four minutes. That should be great. And I'll try to kill my opponent. And look, he's going to be away when these guys show up. And then it's going to turn into a base race, and then Immortals are great at base races. Dude, this is... I mean, at least this time, Juanito doesn't know about this little proxy, whereas... Uh, Pill totally did. Pill was aware. And left anyway. Juanito in the dark. So we can forgive him. So here's the problem if you're Krillis. You have Azela and a cannon defending. And there's going to be a pretty, you know, three Ravager, two Roach armies. Nothing to make fun of. Go kill that cannon. Or the Zealot. I mean, okay, great. Cannon took some damage. Uh, the Zealot's not moving from his... Oh, there we go. He moved. Get the cannon. Get the cannon. Get the Zealot. All right, great. Get the cannon. New Ravager. Come help get the cannon. Oh, but these guys showed up and killed his natural. That's what he's worried about right now. Stalkers don't trade... Oh, nice target fire on that Ravager, though. I was going to say, they don't trade super well, but there's no defense back home. Nothing here. He's trying to kind of focus on both ends right now. And here we go. The problem is Juanito's economy is in more danger than Krollis's is right now because he's really just kind of A-moving his way through. What you want to do is get in here and kill these probes first. So the income for the Protoss player is toast. Dude, Juanito is sitting on 1,000 minerals and 300 gas. Again, just 1,000 resources worth of Zerglings would be sick right here. Spire gets focused down. I think it caught all oh, this surround. The Broodling's getting in on the mix. Is this immortal going to live? Are you... 32 kill immortal? Or are you joking right now? Oh... Okay, he died. But he had like 30 plus kills, man. Oh, that Ravager died. Or rather, immortal died. Oh, they're taking bonus damage. Okay, okay. Alright, so now it's the probe's turn to fight. Do Crocibile on that ramp. Crocibile, the people who are chasing you. So they can't chase you anymore. He needs to be I just, he needs to be killing probes. He needed to be killing probes like yesterday. Crossbow, yes. Shield battery down. Awesome. Awesome target fire in there from Juanito. However, the stalkers do really well against these Ravagers, despite the fact that they're not armored. Stalkers aren't doing technical bonus damage against them, but Ravagers are just 120 HP is not a lot of HP, it turns out. I mean shoot, stalkers have 160 themselves. Which is insane. Look at how fast these Ravagers are dying. The Zerglings are important, though. They're really important versus these Stalkers. Ooh, Krosa. This is a tight, tight match all of a sudden. Ooh, that Zealot's massive. And a Sentry pops out, too. And that's it. Juanito's done. Taps out. Krolis is your winner. That was intense. That turned into an intense little situation for sure. Nicely done. Krolis, dude, he's got his, he's got his ways. He's got his ways, and I guess sometimes they turn into base races. That He made some good decisions there. Stalkers against the Ravagers, good job. Target firing very nicely. Probes fighting as necessary. Recognizing that you've destroyed Juanito, right? So you can afford to lose all of your probes, and you're probably still going to win the game as long as you still have army units and a bank and whatnot. Yeah, but Juanito...
Money, money in the bank. Getting, sp uh, he skipped speed too, which we we noticed that earlier, right? He had 245 gas and he just never got speed. Hmm. All right, next, next up, more cheese. I think it's our last one of the day. We'll be right back. Eternal Empire, the latter edition. Top right, D, Black Death versus Shadow Slayer. This replay is titled Friendly Micro-Oriented Cheese. Interesting. We'll have to see what that means. Ah, I like this skin. I like the orange. I like the blue. I like the design of the probes. It's great. I like it a lot. Traditional probes are good too. Wob 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 wob. Using, I don't know what is this? Is this some kind of like tractor beam? They're tractoring minerals out. I think Protoss would be a little bit more advanced. They could just like suck all these minerals up in four seconds, right? What else? It's cool. Gateway here. Gateway here. All right. So who's going to be the one who's cheesing? Nobody's proxying. Both players are probe scouting though, which is good. Scouting at the lower levels. I talk about it a lot. You should you should do it. Scouting at the lower levels. It's gonna hurt you economically if you're Zerg, but like. <sighs> Let me just tell you, it's not enough of a difference to where you're going to die. Okay? Just trust me on this. If you're high enough a level that it is a problem, then don't listen to me. Alright, Cybercore. Double Gateway, Cybercore. Oh, interesting. So, two gate before Cybercore here. Usually it's gate, Cybercore, gate if you're Protoss, but Shadow Slayer doing some interesting stuff. On the other hand, Black Death, uh, really probing hard. Go, oh, went for the expansion. Wow. So Gateway Cybercore expand. That is dangerous in a PvP. There's a reason it's two gate Cybercore openings in PvP is because it's good. And getting pressure on your opponent is nice. And if you don't have enough to defend against that, you're in a lot of trouble. And if you don't have enough because you went for an expansion instead of a second gateway, well... This looks really bad for D Black Death, I gotta say. This, yeah, I was gonna say, that's a forward pylon. This probe is up to some shenanigans. And shenanigans it is. Alright, so Double Adept is opted for here by Shadow Slayer. On the other hand, we're supply blocked into a Stalker. That's bad. Already has one Stalker, that's good. So the thing about Adepts are, in a straight up fight, they will not beat the Stalkers, but they continually shade into the base and keep the Stalkers at home. And also shading in here and just murdering like 10 probes is totally possible here because that there's no wall off. So D-Black Death, I, he's playing this like he doesn't know it's a PvP. He's playing this like it's a uh, PvT maybe? Yeah, it's more of a PvT build where you get a Stalker out so you can deal with the Reaper, right? And then you get additional gateways, you get your expansion early, you get your second gas, which that's not happening for some reason. So watch, the Adepts just shade right on by. Wait, no, just shade. Okay, or maybe oh, that's an interesting choice. So sure, some probes are going to die here. It could be worse. Maybe micro a little bit. All right, well. Micro-oriented PvP, yes. And then shades in here to the main base and gets more probe kills. And again, this is why you have a wall. Because your probes will die. The good news for D Black Death here is that he's going to kill both of these adepts. And he's got two bases. Which Shadow Slayer does not. So replacing the probes is easy. And getting back up in the probe count is not a big deal at all. Meanwhile, it is going to be an Oracle. Oh, this could be problematic. This could be really problematic. That's an entirely undefended probe line. You do want Stalkers, though. So the fact that we're making Stalkers makes a ton of sense. I like that a lot from D-Black Death. Stalkers in your mineral lines are your saving grace against Oracles if you're Protoss. Is he going to... Oh my gosh, two. Okay, two Oracles problematic. Expanding behind it is Shadow Slayer. That's fine. Can roll with that.
All right. You, I think you need to go when you have two oracles. If you wait too long, your opponent's going to have too many stalkers and maybe consider actually defending their main base, which would be really bad in the long term. Are you seriously taking a third? Dude, D Black Death has no idea what's happening on the other side of the map at all. Knows there's basically a standard opening from your opponent and is going for a third Nexus. That's fast. All right. Double oracle. Do your thing. And death. Instant death and destruction. Black Death, he had an advantage in worker count like four seconds ago. He does not anymore. Watch out! No! Stalkers! Okay, good. You're faster than the stalkers. You can run away. And then you bring an oracle into this base. Oh, there are three oracles. The production tab is actually empty right now for Shadow Slayer, but he's microing pretty hard in all fairness. Dude, it's 16 probes remaining for G Black Death. Black Death is going to be on three bases and like 20 probes here in just a second. Okay. Oh my gosh. And then you get on out, and then maybe you bring this one back in. Eight kills on that Oracle. Revelation getting tossed down. Six kills there. Seven kills there. We're looking at 29 probes killed with the Adept Harass and the Oracle Harass today. This is how you harass someone to death. I don't think there even needs to be a push from Shadow Slayer to win this game. I think Black Death just leaves. It's 31 to 9 workers right now. Oh, these guys are back up. Look, I mean, there's not even anything happening here. Look at the stalkers leave. Black Death, why would you leave? Dude, jump in there. Uh, not enough energy. All right, fair enough. Yeah, so Black Death is on 11 probes and 3 bases, which is astounding. That is some astounding, astounding harass here from Shadow Slayer. Really, really well done. I mean, these guys are trying to poke in, but Stalkers have kind of wisened up to this. There's Stalkers in each mineral line, but at some point, Shadow Slayer just needs to, like, warp in another round of, like, eight Stalkers and just go. He's trying. He's getting additional gateways up. It's hard to warp in eight Stalkers if you don't have eight gateways, you know what I mean? But, yeah, show up with Stalkers. Show up with your Oracles, and sure, there's a Void Ray coming in. Why not? Eventually, you can just burn down Stalkers, though. Like, the dam- look at this. Damage output is such that Stalkers can't do much. And then your probes die. Get that one, too! Oh, that one's alive. For no reason. For no reason. Why are you getting a third base? Shadow Slayer! Come on, man. End it. You do not need a third base here. You're up 36 to 18 workers. In fairness, Black Death has been working hard at replacing this economy. Right? To lose 42 probes in the first 7 minutes and still be at 18 workers is kind of impressive. <laughs> oh, this forward scenario, though. Okay. Alright. This is tight all of a sudden. Dude, Black Death is having the best day ever for somebody who does not have an economy at 8 minutes. Really not doing too poorly. So we're going to try to show up here. What I mean, the stalker count, it's 8 to 6, but there's zealots, there's sentries... Do your move commanding a wire? What? Okay, the move command. No. And then, the oh, GG. Black Death is out. That was quite a cherry on top. Yes. <laughs> the probe count gets obliterated. Good micro. You're not really goal, says Black Death. Oh, interesting. Accusing Shadow Slayer of smurfing. I am. It's a Shadow Slayer. Dude, the probe death. 56 probes killed. <laughs> you will not be gold for long. Good job. Yeah, no, I say Shadow Slayer had a good game. No complaints. Thanks, bro. It's just Shadow Slayer. You too. And peace. Peace be unto you. We're out. So that was okay. Yeah? Yeah. I'd argue that was okay. Man, these oracles, though. Four kills, ten kills, nine kills, two kills, twenty-three kill oracle. Hall of Fame oracle right there. 
And part of it is Black Death went for the third, like, went for the really early Nexus, lost too much to the Adepts, went for a quick third. I mean, greedy, greedy play. I think Black Death needs, needs to learn how to play uh, PvP is the problem. And then maybe one day we'll be good. All right, very good. So that right there is going to be it from me. This is Ben Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a cheese compilation for August 2020. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. If you like what you saw and what you heard today, you can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.